Hello, everybody. This is Kevin B, better known as Skeeter, co-host, well, host of uh, Let's Talk About Adoption, the Foster Care Podcast with my co-host, Patricia. This is part two, episode 19 of Osh. You know, and, um, and before we jump into it, we just want to give a shout out to Sean. He is the um, sole owner and CEO of Untouchable Shots. He's a videographer. He's out of D.C. and he does great work, weddings, any kind of function you want. Um, go ahead and check out his website. You can click on uh, under vendor on my website and you'll see on Touch With Shots. Click, it up, click that and you'll see the wonderful and great work that this individual does. I'm telling you, I mean, he has drones. He got all kinds of things. Uh, he'll make your vet look like a professional because he is a professional. He'll, you'll think that it was somebody that shot it like from Hollywood. I mean, he shot our barbecue and it was off the chain. So untouchable shots, go ahead and um, go to www.livingmyshadow.org. Go on the vendors, click it, and you'll see his uh, website. And um, go ahead and check him out. So how you doing, Patricia? Hey, what's up, Kev? I'm doing great. I'm I heard there's really been some great. more changes going on. Oh, my gosh. This journey has turned into something I would never have imagined. It's been amazing. It's been amazing. Wow, wow. Well, this just just brought on in. Tell, tell us what's going on. Give us a little back brief for those that don't know what's going on. And matter of fact, those that really want to know what's going on, you know, go ahead and check out uh, episode number 18 on our YouTube channel. But she's going to give a back brief real quick before she uh, starts with part two. Go ahead. Take it away. All right. Well, you know, just kind of a little recap. You know, when we left off last time, mm -hmm. uh, I dropped the bomb, right? <laughs> you did. You just dropped I, the big one. <laughs> <laughs> I told my, my, my adoption story and I let people know that um, I found out after having my whole life not known anything, knowing anything about my biological family, mm -hmm. that I was adopted from a hospital and then I found out that my father was my my biological father and my adoptive father i was told are the same person mm -hmm. and that my adoptive half sister and my biological mother mm -hmm. i was told are the same person that was a big bomb <laughs> that was a big bomb and i you know when i found that out when i was told that information by my dear friend i didn't know how to take it kevin i i you know wow i'm here I'm here and how I got here had never really been something that I paid attention to. Mm -hmm. And so when I found that information out, I, I really had to pause and, and take it in and say to myself, now, what do you do with that? Where do you right. go from here? Um, because as I said in, in the previous podcast, I never went looking for my family. Mm -hmm. I never was interested in, and delving into my past because I was comfortable with my present. I'm not judging anybody who's an adoptee and their search. That was just what was true for me. That was the way I handled it in my life. Mm -hmm. So now I'm in this situation because my adoptive father is gone. He's passed away. And but my uh, sister is still alive. And so what do you do with that information? Do I go knock on the door and say, hey, what's up, mom? No, <laughs> <laughs> that wouldn't be right, you know? Yeah, that'd be kind of rough. So I thought, well, how do I find out, you know, if this story is even true? In my heart, I felt like it was not possible because I know my daddy. You know, I told you last time, me and my father are like, you know, mm -hmm. like this. And so I was like, that doesn't, it, um, what I know about him. Right. He was a commensurate gentleman. He would, if people um, said or did anything disrespectful to women, he was that guy that would speak up. So it was hard for me to believe that he would do something like that. Not saying it's impossible because that's, you don't know other people's lives, right? you know, but I just, in my heart, I felt like, I don't know if that's true. So I started thinking about, you know, how can I figure out if this story is even true? So I decided that I wanted to um, look into 
getting a DNA test done. Mm -hmm. Another piece of this was that if I did call my sister and, and say something to her about this story, you know, I didn't want to hurt someone else's life. I didn't want to intrude on someone else's life. Mm -hmm. If that trauma did occur in her life, that would have been a horrible thing for me to bring up to her. True. So the best thing that I could come up with was to get my DNA done. Because now this is kind of convoluted, but it's the way my brain thought. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I figured if I went and got my DNA done, and if the story is true, that my father is my father and my sister is my mother, then I would have DNA from not only my father, because the two parents would be the same, but I should also have DNA from my sister's mother. Correct. So if I could figure it out that whether, if I could do the DNA, then I could figure it out that this story was true or not if I had those two pieces of DNA in me. Mm -hmm. So a few years ago, one of my close friends, um, who's also on an adoption journey, had bought a kit for the Ancestry.com and offered it to me. And I was like, nah, I don't need that thing. I'm not interested in searching. Right. Same thing I'd always said. So um, I called her up and I said, do you still have that kit? <laughs> you know, can you send it to me? Because uh, some new things have happened. <laughs> so I told her the story and she was like oh my gosh yes so she gave it to me immediately and I did the test so I submitted the DNA um, to to, uh, to ancestry.com and I waited and during the time that I was waiting for the results to come back lo and behold I spoke to my nephew my sister's son mm -hmm. and he told me I, that he did a different DNA system, um, 23andMe. And I thought, well, if I had known that, I would have gotten my DNA done by 23andMe because what I didn't know, see, this all was new to me, Kevin. I didn't know how all this worked. Yeah. What I didn't realize is that, sure, they, the these different um, DNA companies will tell you what your DNA makeup is, but the only way they can connect you to relatives is if, some of your relatives are in the system, in right. their respective systems. So right. some people might be in one who are not in another one. Who knows, right? Mm -hmm. So I was like, because definitely my nephew would have my biological father and my biological mother's DNA if those two people were the people that I was told were my parents. So then I would be able to find that link to my sister's family because he's in in her family, obviously, biologically. So it just got kind of crazy. So it was like, doom, 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 you know, waiting for, uh -huh. <laughs> waiting for the DNA test to come back. Why are you eating popcorn? This story is good, yeah, ain't it? This story is good. <laughs> <laughs> so I, um, so I waited and it really didn't take long. It only took about three weeks and the uh, ancestry came back. Mm -hmm. But in the meantime, I did go ahead and also do 23andMe because what if I didn't, again, not knowing how all these services work, right. what if it came back either inconclusive or it didn't give me the information I needed? I said, for sure, 23andMe because he's in there, my nephew's in there, I'm going to be able to know. So here it comes. I get this email from the Ancestry and it says, your results are ready. And I click on it and I'm just, you know, I'm not familiar. So I'm going step by step through it. So it gives me the breakdown of, uh, I found out that I was part Nigerian and part something else in Europe, all the, you know, how it breaks it all down for your different um, DNA. I haven't even gotten to the DNA relatives yet, right? I'm just reading through the site to find out, you know, all the information about me. Yeah, yeah, because it is very fascinating. And all of a sudden, a message, uh, a little leaf thing pops up, says I have a message. Mm -hmm. A message. Already. <laughs> already. I, I wasn't in there five minutes. And so I'm like, well, okay, let me see who this is. And so I click 
on there and I'm thinking it's just coming from the company to say, you know, welcome to our company or something. Oh no, not in my life, that wouldn't be that simple. There was a message from a young woman who said, I think you're my mother's sister. What? What? Oh God. <laughs> what? <laughs> and I'm like, okay, now I got to look at this, these DNA results because now I'm thinking, what does my father have other kids? Because remember the story in my mind right. is that my father is my father and my sister is my mother. So now I got to click to find out what's going on, right? Mm -hmm. I click the DNA results and I find out that the story is not true. What? My father is not, my adopted father is not my biological father and my adopted sister is not my mother. Which, how do you feel right then? How did you feel at that moment? I felt relief mm -hmm. only because like I said, I really didn't feel like my father would be that person, you know? And I was like, so it was relief because everything I knew about my dad was validated. He was a, a, a man who would never do something like that. Mm -hmm. And I said, yeah, you know, because if it was the opposite, I would have been like, how could my father have done that and not been honest with me? So it was a sense of relief, mm -hmm. but it was also a sense of confusion. Now what? Yeah, now, now, now you got to solve, it seems like you got to solve over again. <laughs> <laughs> I knew I should have left this mess alone. <laughs> what I thought. I was like, oh my gosh, now what? So the DNA results showed two people, a man and a woman. And it said that they were likely my half sister and brother. And I was like, I have a whole nother family. So that was the piece that emotionally for me was like, uh -huh. whoa. whoa, you know what I'm saying? I have relatives. Now this young lady's message made sense because she was speaking about the, the results in the, in the ancestry, which because I, sh uh, this person showed up, this woman showed up as being related to me. I showed up to being related to her. Right. So she sent me a message and look, I, at first when she sent the message, I thought she said, you might be my mother. I wrote her back, no nah, girl, I'm not your mama. <laughs> 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 that I know for sure. Right. <laughs> she, was like, <laughs> she was like, no, I think you're my mother's sister. I was like, oh, okay, that, that makes more sense. And so I told her, I said, yeah, you know, I, I might well be your mother's sister because I'm adopted, but I don't know a whole lot about my own past and my own uh, story. So we talked and it turns out that I am related to her mother. Her mother is my half sister on my father's side. Oh. So it was a, an amazing discovery. I didn't know how to, I didn't know how to handle it. I, I keep saying I didn't know how to handle it because look at all the twisted turns yeah, in this yeah. story. Changes, you yeah. know, and I was like, oh my goodness, I I don't know what to do. But I have since spoken to my sister and we have a wonderful relationship and we found that we have a lot in common and it's been great. But that's not all. Remember I told you I took the 23 and me, right? Yeah, with the nephew the same one. <laughs> So all during this time, when I'm making these new discoveries about what I found in Ancestry, mm -hmm. the 23andMe is going on. So the 23andMe comes back because then I started thinking, what if the only reason um, I don't have a match to my sister and my nephew and my brother and all these people is because nobody in my family um is in this system in this database right what if the story is true and these two people that i found in ancestry are just extras you see what i'm saying so now i'm back where i started i'm like oh my Mine goodness is, <laughs> is doing all kinds of um calculations <laughs> right i'm like I, the only way i'm gonna know for sure 
is when the DNA comes back where I know my nephew's in the system and then it'll tell me. So sure enough, a couple weeks later, here comes 23andMe. I was like this, shaking, scared to hit the button. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Two things are going to happen. I'm going to find out the truth of this story. And second of all, some more people are going to come out of the wood. Oh, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. so I got to be ready for both of those. So I hit the button and I look and my nephew's name doesn't show up. So the, the story was confirmed. I am not related to my adoptive family. Adoptive my father family. is not my father and my sister is not my mother. And the same woman that my sister that I did find, my half sister that I did find was in 23andMe also. She, but the guy, yeah, my, my half sister. Met. It showed up. Right. Okay. We both showed up. We both okay. matched. So that confirmed you. In, Right, in both both systems, right? So right. now I'm all excited, yeah, you know, uh -huh. and she knew that I was waiting for the 23andMe as well. So, but the, the guy, he didn't do 23andMe, the guy that had shown up in, as my brother in Ancestry.com. Uh -huh. So now let's go back. For those of you who um, got to watch the first podcast. If you haven't watched it, you need to go back and watch oh, yeah. it. The story it, it, has been it, everywhere. You need, need to go back. <laughs> you got to go back. So in the first podcast, I told you that I got all of this information from a conversation with my dearest friend that I've known since I was one year old. Mm -hmm. And so in the meantime, while I'm doing all this DNA, she's like, well, let me search for the guy. I said, do your thing, girl, do your thing. I, because I have always been of the philosophy, as I mentioned in the first podcast, that I would never go looking for my family, but if they ever came looking for me, I would receive them. So I received my sister because that the, the um, relationship was initiated mm -hmm. from that message I got and from her contacting me. Right. But I hadn't gotten anything yet from the guy, so I wasn't going to pursue that. Lord help Facebook, okay? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so my um, friend went on to Facebook and found out that she was friends with a friend of the guy that showed up in Ancestry that's supposed to be my brother. Three degrees of separation. <laughs> Three degrees. <laughs> <laughs> so she calls me and she's like, look, can I um, talk to my friend about you? I said, you can certainly talk to your friend about whatever you want. Just don't share my personal information with this person I don't know. Right. So right. she contacts her friend and her friend says, well, I want to contact this guy because he might be her brother. And he knew that he, that the um, the guy in the ancestry was looking for his family member. Right. So she calls me and says, I have, I called your brother. I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> she said, I talked to your brother today. You have a brother. That's the person that's in the ancestry. I was like, oh my gosh. Am I ready for this? I'm just getting used to having a sister. Now I got a brother too. <laughs> so she said now you, now, you, now, now you already verified that you had a brother in the ancestry already right right he like, was listed you there but you, yes. wouldn't, but you, wouldn't, you didn't contact him okay he didn't contact right, but I just didn't initiate contact yes. right. so ancestry had already shown me that I had a brother and a sister so I was like uh, 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 uh. she said well he wants you to call him he's sitting at the phone right now waiting for you to call him I was like okay now, 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 is, now is this brother is this brother the same, um, has the same relationship as your sister or is the other nope. side? It's it's opposite side. side. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. So <laughs> my sister is related, is my sister through my dad. dad. Okay. And my brother is a brother through my mom. So you get both. Okay, cool. So, so I'm like, holy Toledo, what am I going to do now? So I said, okay, remember, if they reach out to me, I'm going to respond. Right. He asked for me to call, so I'm going to respond. Mm -hmm. So I pick up the phone, 
and I called the number that my girlfriend gave me and I say to him, hi, this is Patricia. I'm your sister. And he was just beside himself. Now I'm going to tell you that my brother Bo, because he said, girl, you can, you can share my name. <laughs> I love you, Bo. Well, that's the way you can share my name. <laughs> he, said, he said, oh my gosh. And he revealed to me that he has been looking for me for 18 years. Wow. So he knew, he knew you, you was out there. Yes. Yes, he knew I was here. He said, and this sounds so much like my family because it sounds like me. Uh -huh. He said that my auntie told him one day, 18 years ago, to be careful who you're out there dating because you have a sister out there. And right. he was like, what? And so he said that day he started looking for me. He checked the hospital. He checked the vitals statistics he checked everywhere he could uh -huh. check the problem was he had the wrong birth year and a different name because yeah, yeah. auntie couldn't remember the exact name so he wasn't he didn't have accurate information to search with but that's why he ended up doing 23 i mean uh, ancestry.com because you. he said if ever i showed up in there it would show the match right mm -hmm. so i got to find my sister on my father's side, who is absolutely my heart, my whole heart, my whole heart. I got a big sister. <laughs> and then I have, I know, right? <laughs> and I have a brother, Bo. So I'm talking to him on a Zoom call with my sister and my niece who pull, pulled all this together. Mm -hmm. She was the one who sent the original message through Ancestry. Mm -hmm. And another cousin who I found in uh, Atlanta, we're all on the Zoom call, and Bo joins the call, and in the middle of the call, he, he has, had already told me I had another brother. Mm -hmm. My brother Ronnie comes in wow. and sits in front of the, the um, computer, mm -hmm. and he like sits in front of the computer, and he turns and he looks at me, and he goes, oh my gosh, she looks just like my mo our mother. I'm like, ah! There's tears and everything. Yeah. It was like, what's up, baby girl? So I'm the baby. And You're I have a, I have two brothers and a sister. And because of little old me, it's brought both of these families together. It has been amazing. Amazing. <laughs> uh, it, it's, it's great hearing, hearing this type of story. Oh, man. It, it reminds me of my story and how... Cause you you're the adoptee, and see it's it's called the triad. It's the three triad. Phases, okay. Right. You have the uh, biological family on both sides, and then you have your mm -hmm. adoptive family. And so you're okay. the you're the in the middle of that triad, and you you're bringing everybody together, not purposely. It just happens. Yeah. It just, it happens. just happens. And, and you're the glue, because you have a family, the adoptive family, and then you searching your biological family. You got them now, and you bringing all of them together. But you're not doing it on purpose. It just happens because all of it's a part of you. That's your story. Yes, yes, yep. yes. yes. Yep. Triad. Yep. And and so this triad has been amazing. Both sides of the family have mm -hmm. accepted both sides. Mm -hmm. My, my uh, niece had lunch with my brother because <laughs> they wow. live near each other. Wow. Um, my sister now has embraced other members of our family that we found, and she and I talk all the time. She wants to talk every day, but I have a very busy schedule. Yeah, I know. And I can't tell me about your her, <laughs> Yeah, I, I think of her, and I'm talking to her in my life all day, every day. But every morning when I wake up, my sister and my brothers and my cousins are all sending me messages. My niece is wow. telling me they love me. We all wake up in the morning and say good morning to each other via text. text yep. mm -hmm. I can't even believe it. So then the story gets even better. Okay. So I'm driving down the street one day. Mm -hmm. Now I done found all these people, right? Yep. I'm driving down the street at, at home and my cousin who lives in Atlanta calls me and said, I have a big surprise for you. And I'm like, oh, he's probably going to, you know, show up here or something like that. He mm -hmm. goes, thank God I was stopped at a red light when he told me this, right? <laughs> he said,
said, I want to tell you that you have a cousin in the town where you live. What? <laughs> oh. Wow. Wow. What? Are you kidding me? Wow. He goes, yeah. Now, where I live, I live on the far northwest side of town. Mm -hmm. And where my cousin lives is on the far southeast side of town. So it's about a 45 minute to an hour drive mm -hmm. to get there. But that day, I happened to be on that side of town running some errands, me and my husband. So he said, I'm going to send you your cousin's phone number. And he was waiting for you to call him. Mm -hmm. So I call my cousin and I find out I'm literally five minutes from his house. Wow. Wow. Amazing. So I'm in the restaurant crying. He says to me, uh, if it didn't take my wife so long to get dressed, I'd be over there right now. <laughs> 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 I said, don't you worry. Let her take her time. I'm coming to you. I said, as soon as we finish eating, I got a couple of errands to run. I'm going to come over there and we, I have the rest of the day. Mm -hmm. to uh, spend, you know, with you. So we ran the errands and the whole time I'm nervous. I'm like, let's hurry up, hurry up, hurry, let's get there. Mm -hmm. And so we drive over to my cousin's house and I walk up to the door and I get about three steps from the door and then I, I almost fainted. I, I, I just started crying and I can see him through the door sitting in, in a chair and I'm like, oh my gosh, that person looks like me. Wow. I am about to meet. Yep. <laughs> you know, you know. Yep. <laughs> I am about to meet a real life biological member of my family for the first time. In your life. In your whole life. That feeling, you cannot describe it to anybody unless they actually went through it. All your life, you've been waiting to see that, even though you might not have been pushing the envelope, but in your mm -hmm. heart, you always had that, wow, who do I really look like? Because you don't look like your adopted family. You say, who, mm -hmm. do, I, who do I look? Look at my hair from my lips, my eyes, all that. And then when you see somebody in front of you that looks mm -hmm. like you, you it's, it's amazing. It, it, it was. And you know, I never thought about it. I, mm -hmm. It never clicked in my head until that very moment, all those things you just described mm -hmm. came rushing. I was like, I, I almost couldn't do it because I was paralyzed. You know what I mean? Like I was just, <gasps> I wasn't going to run away, but I didn't know how to take the next step. I, 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 I physically froze and just was there for a moment. Mm -hmm. And so he starts walking towards the door and he has the exact same experience. He stops about three steps from the door and he just looks at me. Wow. And then he comes and he opens the door. It was like that epiphany, you know. We knew the moment we saw each other that we were family, you know. And so I went in, I cried like, oh my gosh. The the tears, I whew. he he was like overjoyed. I was overjoyed. Uh -huh. We were talking. And then he went and he said, I have something for you. And he brought a picture of my great grandparents wow. and my grandparents. That was a picture of my grandfather mm -hmm. and his sister sitting on the lap of my great grandfather with my great grandmother standing beside him. Wow. Okay, now I'm going to cry. <laughs> Yeah, I couldn't believe it. It's amazing. It's it's it touches <laughs> it goes past the heart, it touches your soul. It it goes into your soul and, and then from out there it just touches every bone and every muscle inside of you. And it just it's just a feeling of appreciation and warmth and being loved, even though you have been loved, but it's just a different type of being loved, you know? And um, it's, I, I got these glasses on, so you can't see my tears. 
I, I, I just, <laughs> and I'm not a crier, but I got tears. And it brings it, it brings it back. It's bringing the memory. Everything that you're saying, everything that you're saying, I lived, and it comes back again. And when, when and Patricia, it's not just going to stop there. It's going to continue. This memory that you have, this first memory that you have, is going to hit you in the middle of the night. It's going to hit you all types of. It's just amazing, and it's just, it's going to get better. It's going to get better. You know, it's going to get better and better. You know, and um, you just just enjoy it. Just enjoy it. It's a ride. I couldn't, it's a ride. I couldn't believe it because my sister mm -hmm. told me a similar story as to what my brother had told me. So my brother told me he had been looking for me for 18 years. My sister told me that the only reason that she did the DNA test in 23andMe and Ancestry was because our father had told her that she had a sister. He had said that she had an older sister, but I'm not sure that we may have one. We may have, there might be another one. It, <laughs> but I is, know for it sure. It's going to show up. It's going to show up. I know for sure, because DNA don't lie, <laughs> that we are sisters. And so she was looking for me too. Wow. She was looking for me too. Wow. And so when I saw my cousin that day, and he gave me that picture, he printed a copy of the picture and I brought it home. And I just, I look at it every day because that's my grandpa and my great grandpa and my great aunt and my great grandma. Like that's my family. Yep. That's, who, that's who I am. And I found out so much about both sides of my family. I've spoken to my aunts on, on my brother's side mm -hmm. and I've spoken to my cousins. The other night I was sitting at, just sitting in my living room and a message came up on Facebook Messenger and um, this woman says to me, I'm your cousin. And I gave her my phone number and I said, can we, if you're awake at this hour, she's ahead of me in time. I said, let's talk and we just chatted. And I'm, I can't wait this stupid COVID. I'll be so glad when it's over because we're going to have the biggest family reunion ever. <laughs> you know Your whole, when this uh, pandemic is over with, you're going to be doing so much traveling, mm -hmm. going, coming, going, coming, family reunions. When you, the, the very first family reunion, mm -hmm. it's going to feel like, oh, you think you had the shakes and everything there. Oh, my God. Okay. I, you know, we had four family unions planned for this year, but we had to cancel it. Yeah, you know? because of the pandemic. But I've been to I've been to three already because I found mine mm -hmm. in 2016. My first family union was 2018, and mm -hmm. so we just got stuff all planned. Oh, oh man, it's crazy, and, and it's not just here in the United States. Which you start calling yeah. people in like other places. Oh my goodness! <laughs> it's crazy. It's crazy. Oh my goodness! Wow! I can't. I can't wait. I just, I, I'm loving the fact we meet, we get together every Sunday. That's great. And I'm loving the fact that I'm getting to see my family, at least, you know, um, on the computer. And I can't wait for this pandemic to end because hold I, I need oh. hugs. <laughs> I need hugs. And I, um, I'm just so blessed though, Kevin, because a lot of stories don't turn out like mine. Nope. And I, I just I know that I am blessed. Um, the the difference was for me. I think that you know they were looking for me. They wanted to find me on both sides of my family, and so I've been welcomed with open arms. I don't judge anybody. I don't know the full story of you know, my parents and why I was given up for adoption. And if I find out, fine. And if I don't, fine. Because like I said, I'm here. And now I have family. I, my, my adoptive parents are both gone. So I still um, have my adoptive sisters and my nephew and my other family members. And now I even have extra <laughs> family. <laughs> it's okay. Extended, extra, whatever. Yep, yep. And, and so me, this person that was raised an only child because my, um, my parents were both in their second marriage when they adopted me. So in my family, I was the only child. Um, 
I have all of these family members and, and I have siblings and I'm learning how to be siblings. And, you know, it was cute the other day. I kept telling my brother, uh, Bo, I said, look, I want you to see where I live. So I took my, my phone and I turned on the camera and I walked him around my house because I want my brother to be able to know where his sister lives. Right, right. You right. know, and then he was like, well, shoot, let me show you where I live. And he <laughs> He's in Atlanta, right? No, he's in the uh, D.C. area. D.C. area. Oh, he's down there by us. Okay. All right. Yeah. So I'm like, come on. You know, so when I walk out of my house, I can see the mountains and I showed him the mountains and I showed him my house. And then he was like, let me show you my big tree that I planted in his uh, garden. And, all, you know, all of those things make you a part of your family. Right. Yep. Mm -hmm. You know, and I just wanted him to know where I live. I didn't want it to be something that was a figment of his imagination. Right. And then I called my brother Ronnie and I'm driving down the street and I said, I'm just going to see if I can catch him. And he was like, girl, I was just thinking about you. <laughs> so, wow. you know, it's just that to have Great. that kind of relationship with people. And in this journey, I found out that where I grew up in suburban Washington, there were a lot of, I grew up in an all black community that had every socioeconomic group. We had our own schools, our own um, church, our own recreation center. We had people that lived in apartment buildings, single family homes, townhouses. It was the whole gamut in a little, like nested in a little area. If, you ever want a chance to uh, read about the history of this place, go to the um, Arlington Historical Society in Arlington, Virginia, and read about the Black community in Arlington. It is, you would not believe it. Um, and so how this community got created um, and where we lived. And community was, parents. Right. It's, it's Sharon, Sharon, one oh, of yeah, those. Yeah, yeah. She, there's a big article in the newspaper about, um, yeah. Right. So Some there were three black communities in, the, uh, in Arlington. Mm -hmm. The one I lived in, the one she lived in, and then there was another one. Okay. And so when we, when I was reading about it, um, I, I did, I have been reading about it for years, but I didn't realize something I found out during this journey is there were a lot of adopted children in that community. Mm. There were families that reached out and took care of other people's children, either through foster care mm -hmm. or adoption. I didn't know until I started this journey how many of my close friends in that same community that I grew up with, we're not close now because, you know, we've all gone out into the world, but I found out about at least five other young girls who got adopted by wonderful families wow. and um and i was one of them so now that is kind of another extension of family to have that commonality mm -hmm. with people who went through the same on the same journey that i've been on it's just been amazing, amazing. um you can't you can't you can't make this up no you this can't for real <laughs> so as, as you um you know, um, get to with your family and, and start learning more about um, this adoption in itself. Yeah. It's amazing because everybody has similar stories and some of them have entirely different stories. And it's just ama amazing how um, adoptees, the things that they have to go through and the different emotional mm -hmm. uh, roller coasters that they have to go through, even at a at a age of our age, you know, you still... You, you know, you still have that kid in you, you know, when you meet your family for the first time, you know, mm -hmm. or, or um, mm -hmm. you think of, a, of something that, you know, uh, that your adoptive family did for you. You, you, you a lot of people think we ain't appreciative because, you know, um, especially now, because there's a lot of people out there that talks about, you know, the things and the trauma and stuff they go through. And what I try to mm -hmm. articulate is not that we're not being grateful or anything like that, but you know, there are another side of the story that a lot of people don't know about. You know, they just see the happiness, oh, adopted family took care of this individual, yeah. all, yeah. all is peachy and cream. But no, there's another side of it too. 
because it's mm -hmm. an entity thing, especially when you go yeah. to the doctors that very first time, like you said, and yes. you're like, you're like, I don't know nothing about me, <laughs> you know? So um, it's little things like that. But um, so we got to wrap it up a little bit. Do you think there's a part three? Do you think we need a part three? That's, did you, you tell know, or? We might have to do a part three because as I learn more about my, mm -hmm. my family and my background and all of this, some new twists are coming up. Okay. Um, the last thing I want to tell you is that I'm so excited because in just a few days for Thanksgiving, mm -hmm. I'm going to have my first Thanksgiving with my biological Outstanding. Family. And you know, take plenty of pictures, have someone, designate someone to be your photographer. I will. I will. Right. And they yes. need to take pictures even when you're not knowing that they're taking pictures. That's the okay. most important thing. So like okay. when you get in that hole, you don't even know they're taking pictures. They need to catch every freaking moment. You have mm -hmm. two or three photographers, cameras, just take pictures, you know, mm -hmm. organize pictures, pictures when, you know, you're just sitting at the table or you don't think nobody's looking at you or whatever. Tell them, just give them free reign. Like President Obama did with his photographer. He's like, just take pictures. <laughs> just take pictures. Just take Because you, you want to cherish the moments, especially when you're by yourself and no one's around, not even your spouse, and you're just looking at them pictures. You're gonna enjoy them moments. Just do that. Just yeah, do that. yeah. I can't, I can't wait to see them pictures. I, I, will, I will share them with you. I'm I so happy will. for you. I'm so happy for you. That, that's, 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 that's okay. I'm not, oh, this is, you just don't know how happy I'm for you. This is, <laughs> oh, it's great. I appreciate you so much. Thank you for letting me share my story. Hey, this ain't gonna, <laughs> hey, we know we, we're gonna have you back on again. We're gonna like act like I you know that my second book was like you know um life after the dream mm -hmm. and um we're gonna have you on uh for part three you know okay okay a couple of months, <laughs> we're gonna check in with you and you're just gonna tell us all these little wonderful things that you found out you know so um yeah. so with all that being said um we're gonna wrap this up a little bit we just want to thank our co-host Patricia coming on and sharing her story um. It's not going to end. We're going to have her back again. In the meanwhile, we just want to let everybody know that we adoptees are strong. Army strong, strong. We could be all you could be, whatever you want us to call. Whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> That's us. And what? Like being said, uh, you can do anything that you want to do and be anything you want to be. Be good. Peace. Thank you.